to management and say, what do you think? Is it good? Approval. We call that the schedule baseline. Do you guys use that term? Schedule baseline? So you fix the baseline, and then after that, you control the schedule. And what, what have you found in your experience of scheduling at, at Medtronic? Scheduling is really important. We do set up in the development world where we have a project that's going to last between two and three years. The PM starts out, and here's their schedule baseline. It's going to take me two and a half years. I'm going to need X number of people at these amounts of times. And we, we plan by quarter. And then we ask for direct expense as well, whether that might be some hourly labor, it might be some materials or some other miscellaneous things. Here's what we do. Now we've plotted our baseline. Every time we go in for a phase review, we're measured. Um, how are you doing compared to baseline? Have you met your deliverables? But then one group weekly will sit there and say, where are you? Are you on schedule? Are you on task? So how you plan your schedule, we talked about risk before. If you have something that might be a highly risky area, you might want to have a little more time in your schedule. Um, ultimately, be careful on how you present your schedule and know your stakeholders. If you went in and said, hey, I think I can get this done and the best case scenario is two months. So when the boss says, how often can you do, get it done? I can get it done in two months with four people. Well, I would say, OK, I think I can get it done in two months. I know I'm going to have four people, but there might be something else going on. So I'm going to say I need five and a half months. So I go to the boss and say, I need five and a half months and four people. And the boss is like, oh, I don't know about five and a half months. Can you make it five? Sure, I can make it five. If I deliver in four and a half, I'm a rock star. <laughs> If I walked in and said, I'm going to deliver in four months, and I deliver in four and a half, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I had the same deliverable on the same time. <laughs> so the scheduling, I mean, when you're doing a short project, it seems a little bit simple. When you're doing a longer project, the baseline is really important. And we'll get into change management later and change control. But if you have to change from what your original plan is, there's a process to understand that, get agreement, and understand the impact. Exactly. Right. So what happens when they ask you for uh, input about the schedule takes three years, and you tell them, like you say, six months, but they put it in the schedule two months, and you know that's impossible, and you give them the reason why it's impossible, but they still don't listen, and they still have an agreement. The question is, what happens when you say it's going to be six months, and they'll tell you, no, you're going to get two months, and they put that in the system? That's really a challenging situation. Um, what I would do is right up front say, OK, I suggest six months is ample for this reasons because, and list my reasons. However, I'm being asked to deliver it in two months. So here are my trade-offs. Mm -hmm. And then get their buy-in on trade-offs, because maybe what I wanted to do is I wanted to do some extensive testing, maybe some accelerated testing, where it takes me four or five months to get the, the results back. And you know, give me two months, month and a half to get the design, and then we put it on test. So I've got an idea. Well, if you're not going to give me five months, six months, I can't do that test. So I'll get you the design in two months, but it's not going to be as well tested as if I had six. Absolutely. And the key word? is trade-offs. That's why it's called project management professional. In the world of the PMI, there is a document, and I'm going to show it to you right now because I don't want to forget. It's called the PMI Code of Ethics. And if you do a, a quick Google search for PMI Code of Ethics, and I'll show you over here, move it across. You just Google PMI Code of Ethics, and you see that there's a PDF down here, Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. And you realize, when it comes up, that there are four overarching pillars for this Code of Conduct. I want to show you one of them that governs what she said. Honesty. As a project manager, the PMI take it very seriously when you're a PMP that you need to be honest. And if, if someone says, oh, it's, it, it's, I, know it's, I know it's three months, but I'm going to say it's, it's two, you're violating this clause right here. You see this? This is honesty.